everybody. Uh, welcome you to the People's Church of Divine Prophecy, Sunday morning service. This is Reverend Steve Aikens, I'm the pastor of the church. A couple of quick housekeeping rules. Please silence your cell phones unless you're medical or law enforcement personnel. Restrooms are down the hall, quick right, quick left. There's cold drinks in the refrigerator, hot drinks on the back. Um, normally we don't have quite this much food, so I'd ask you not to taste it too much if you go back for something during the service. But if you can't resist it, you can't resist it. So but feel free to do any of the above during the service. We're not very strong on ceremony here. I'd like to ask uh, Gail to light the Candles symbolize the unity of body, mind, and spirit to start the service. Gail's just back from two weeks at the Delphi University, so I'm glad to see her back. Thank you. Please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the first time. Dear Father God, we give thanks for this gathering here today. May we be here in this moment, feel the love and hope given by your presence, the love and hope of all those that have come. May we feel ourselves uplifted, enlightened, and more than we were when we came. I ask this in all honesty, amen. amen. The next portion is a thought for the day from the pastor. So I think of something that's occurred to me in the past week and how I've managed to put it into a spiritual discipline that I'm trying to bring into my life. I call it turning spiritual knowledge into spiritual wisdom. We love our classes. We love to sit around in groups of like-minded people. But when you go out and meet the world head on, that's the challenge. Putting it into practice, making it work for you in real life. This past week, uh, what's come to me is, you know, we're kind to a lot of people, we help a lot of people, but how often do we take time to be kind to ourselves? You know? I mean, really, how often do we take time to do, do something nice for ourselves, buy ourselves a gift, or take time out and just buy something, or give ourselves something, or go do something just for us? And I think that there's a lot of virtue in that personally. If you, you know, if you, if you get too bound up in service to others, which is a good thing, too bound up in all you're doing other things, you, you get too caught up, and, and sometimes you just feel unappreciated, and it really drives your confidence down a little bit. And I always go back to uh, one in the Bible, uh, a spiritualist accept the Bible as symbolic and not a historical document. But what it says in the Bible, Christ said to somebody, if you have two coats, give one of them away. He didn't say, give both of them away and I'll give you another one. Now, you have to honor the gifts that you get. You have to give them to yourself and cherish the gifts that are given to you as part of the process. If you don't cherish and honor what's given to you, not more is going to be coming until you do. So I just would ask you, Everybody has birthdays and everybody has days that they give things to other people. Just pick a day once a year, put it on your calendar, and that is the day where you give yourself a gift. If you're going to give yourself a physical gift, buy it a couple days before, wrap it up, put it in the corner, and don't open it until that day. You know, it's nice to treat yourself and appreciate what you do and what you've managed to gather for yourself. I just ask you to think about that and just, uh, you know, appreciate what's given to you, honor what's given to you, and, and, uh, and cherish what's given to you. Thank you for listening. The next portion is the spiritual healing portion of the service. We have Judy and Ann do the healing. The way this works is that there's three chairs here. You can sit in one of those for uh, for healing, or you can sit in the back back there waiting to be, and I'll bring you up for the healing. Uh, Ashton will do a guided meditation, and with, when you hear this during the meditation, that means that a chair has become vacant, and usually it's one in the back, so go have a seat back there if you want know, healing. When we move you forward, that way you can enjoy the meditation and you can have a contact healing if you'd like. Um, 
will start the service. There's a prayer for spiritual healing in the bowl on the back of the hymnal. We'll read that together in the instant. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. If you have someone you would like to know needs healing at a distance, once the energy is built, please feel free to put their name into the healing meditation while Ashton is doing her visualization. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just get into a comfortable position so we can start the meditation. Feet straight on the ground, thumbs up in your legs. Close your eyes. Just sit relaxed. Let go of the tension if there is any in your physical body. Let go of the thoughts that are on your mind. Just let it go. Bring your focus and your awareness to your breath. Connect to the rhythm of your breath. Breathe in. flowing throughout your body. Like a beautiful stream, flourishing, nurturing your entire body, your mind. you deep and deep within yourself to a very peaceful and quiet place. No interruption. No inner Connect 
with this peaceful presence. While you breathe, repeat to yourself quietly. I am at peace with it. With your inhale, I am at peace within. And exhale, I am at peace without. Connect to the cycle. This is the true state of your consciousness. You are meant to be at peace. Always. Embrace this peace aspect of your consciousness and be still For it is in this stillness you experience wholeness and in this quietness and in this silence you become aware of who you are. You are an infinite being. Feel your consciousness rising higher. Higher above your head. And connecting with your higher self. The ultimate state of your consciousness. There are no thoughts in this state of consciousness. It is a pure state of being. Connect with your higher self and just be. Be 
in this heightened state of awareness. Feel your consciousness expanding further out. and evolving and connecting you to the universal consciousness and to the source of infinity. And in this heightened awareness, feel your perception shifting to a new perception. To a new ways, with a new outlook, with new views. Feel yourself in this immense state of consciousness that is unlimited with no limitation. Remember yourself as you once existed in these higher dimensions as a perfect thought in the mind of your Creator. And that thought evolved into life. Light beings, each light representing a segment of the universal light. Each consciousness having a portion of the universal consciousness. you are evolving and becoming aware of the creative force, the creative power that created the entire universe. And you as part of that creation. That creative power is within you. It's your spirit, the spark of light that is within each soul. Feel your connection with the entire universal consciousness. For you have the power to create as you once created in those higher dimensions of the universe. That same vital force is within you, wherever you are. As a spirit, or as a human, that force is within you. Become aware of that universal power 
the creative power within apply it to your lives to any situation that you would like to see it transform for better for higher and for the highest good of all not limited to your physical realities. In essence, you are a spirit, a spiritual being, having human experience, a human with infinite knowledge and wisdom and creativity. Become aware of your infinite self as a whole while you are having physical human experience. You are an infinite being wherever you are. Whatever you do, apply your universal understanding your infinite divine knowledge and wisdom to your daily actions. See yourself creating your realities with a new perspective, with a new outlook at your life. with new ways, with new purpose. See yourself manifesting, materializing your thoughts, your intentions that serves your highest and the highest good of all. For in a spirit, we are one. We all originate from the divine source of oneness. In consciousness, we are all connected, connected to one state of true being, unconditional love and compassion. Embrace, embrace these beautiful aspects of your consciousness. Rise above the human conditions and the human behavior. Focus on the goodness and the perfection that is within each person. For in God's mind, we are one with God's heart. We are love. your connection with your surroundings. And feel the oneness and the universal consciousness. As you become aware of this truth, embrace you as a whole, not as an individual, but as a whole, a whole being.
these vibrations of your higher self. Feel it coming down to your physical body. Integrated in this physical reality. Wherever you are, whatever you do, just be the light that you are and the love that you are. Feel your breath that is bringing you back slowly. To the here and now. Become aware of your physical senses. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. effort is necessary if I am to grow spiritually and develop my spiritual life. I must keep the spiritual persistently, perseveringly, lovingly, patiently, and hopefully. By keeping them, every mountain of difficulty shall be laid low. The rough places of poverty and spirit shall be made smooth. And all who know that God is of my, all of my ways to get close to the Spirit of God is to find life and healing. The next portion of the service is the inspirational lecture. Today we have Dr. James Thomas speaking to us. He traditionally likes the first of the month, I guess, because he likes all the food. <laughs> he brings a heck of a tuna casserole. It used to be chicken casserole, but he found out that I don't eat chicken, so he switched over to tuna. And, uh, that was nice. I've known Dr. Thomas, geez, I guess about 30 years, I guess we've known each other, isn't it? Quite a while. And we were working together 30 years ago in a little church on the back side of Sanford. So it's been quite a walk for all of us together. Um, he's been chiropractor to the stars. He's founded several metaphysical organizations back in 1972 when they weren't that popular. Back then you were thought to be a commie if you weren't a certain way and you had long hair and you was either a commie or crazy. So, and he persevered and started a wonderful organization called the IAM, International Association of Metaphysics which this church is a sub-chapter of now. Um, he's just a wonderful person, got a lot of humor to him, walks his talk and practices what he believes. So please welcome Dr. James Thomas. strange physician 
my strange position is, doesn't think about the whole body, but he only thinks of one thing. And the last bout that I had with thank you for all your prayers and well wishes was that when I got home from the hospital and that, and uh, as soon as I got home there was somebody there to take down all the information and that like they do as a caregiver. And he came and he says, tomorrow we'll have a nurse here, next day we'll have physical therapy, along with a week. And nobody showed up. So I called my doctor and I said, well, nobody showed up. So all of a sudden, this rush of people came. <laughs> and I says, what? Oh, we're here from Vistas. Who the hell ever heard of Vistas? It was something new to me. And now, all of a sudden, I am under the care of hospice. <laughs> Where am I in this world? <laughs> so, out comes a nurse. She spends a half a day with me, going over everything I got. So I said, then the doctor comes the same day. Another cockamamie doctor. <laughs> well, you know, I, he says, what is wrong with you? I probably should have said, I'm crazy. Should have said, I talked to the dead, and maybe that would have gotten <laughs> Well, he kept saying, what is, he leans down, he says, what is truly wrong with you? I says, I don't know. I says, I went to the hospital, my friend Bridget came over, I called the ambulance, she says, you gotta call the ambulance. I says, why do I have to call the ambulance? He says, because you can't walk, you can't do anything, you're bouncing off the walls. I said, okay, so do you think I could dial 911? No way. I was out of it, totally complete of, out of it. I wasn't in this world. So, the ambulance comes, fire truck comes, they all come. Here, it's not one, but two fire trucks and an ambulance. <laughs> the house wasn't on fire. So they get me in the ambulance, they take my temperature, it's 105. Now I gotta tell you the secret of this. It was my birthday on Saturday, the 20th of December. Earl, Florence, Patricia, and uh, Willie all took me to my birthday. They said, we're going for a birthday party. So we went to Titusville because I, I was told that there was a fish restaurant in Titusville that is very good. I didn't get fish, I got shrimp. <laughs> a special kind of shrimp, and it was red shrimp. Yep. So, got home, didn't feel quite right. So I called my acupuncturist on Saturday. I went to him and he says, boy, you've really got it. And all of a sudden he did something, and from that time on, I don't know what happened. But it, broke whatever was happening in me and brought it to a head. So I get to the hospital. I thought this time because I have pains in my chest, you know, 10 pounds of books sitting on me. Well, is it time for the pacemaker or not the pacemaker? I go back and forth. <laughs> Doctors are all going back and forth. They said, you've got the flu. You got bacterial pneumonia. I said, okay, those are two good things. <laughs> so this is how it all led to me being alive today, again, and going through all this turmoil and all the prayers that brought me forth to where I am today. And so now I got 
hospice or VTATs coming twice a week. I got a lovely massage person that comes and massages my back twice a week. I don't have to pay for any of this, you know. Then they wanted to bring in a hospital bed. They said, you got to change your bed. So I went out and spent $790 for a new mattress, extra firm. That works out good. So I've done everything they've told me to do. So now it's at the point where I didn't listen. And when you don't listen, you get into trouble. Imagine you not listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I asked, coming over, I asked about should I talk on the simple life making everybody happy. And Art said, you spoke here about that. Came and asked John, because John's at every service. I thought you were going to draw colored pictures up here. I am, but I'm waiting till the end. I'm waiting for you to finish. <laughs> I thought we were having butterfly readings. I think we have another Robert or something, you know. No, no, no. No, 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 no. So anyways, in this whole process, you know how I am with suits. I have a different color suit every time I come here. And that, so I have like 10 suits, but I've cut them down to eight. <laughs> so I said, all of a sudden, I went to the doctor. Do you know how much white weight I've lost? Over 30 pounds. And I went to the closet and I said, oh, this is so nice. I pulled out a suit when I first got here to California in 1989. I think that's when, 88 when we arrived. And I pulled out the suit that I got then. And it's a 34 inch waist and I went from a size almost an 86 down to a size 84. I've lost over 30 pounds and I feel great. And it's in what you feel and how you act and in everything. And it all boiled down to it. My acupuncture said, can you get in touch with your teachers? Can you get in touch with your teachers? And I says, I haven't been able to get with my teachers since I went into the hospital. So he said, this is what we're going to do. He says, I'm going to do something today that I've never done before. So he did his treatment. He says, now, he says, go home, sit in meditation, and get your teachers back and your guides. So I went home, okay, laid on the bed. I asked. I went to sleep for seven hours. <laughs> so they worked on me on the outer planes. And I woke up and I says, okay, I'll sit. And who comes in but my nun, who I received in the early, late 60s. And she said to me, she says, Thomas, when are you going to listen? She's been here working, we're all here working with you, and you don't listen to us. Get rid of all the negativity, because you don't have any of these things. You've allowed the portals to open up and say, I can't do this, or I have this. And we say, and we say I have this, give me your break, give me your thing. It's not I'm supposed to have a rubber band on my wrist, you know? Philip has one. I have one too. Oh, his watch. I don't forget to do this. Do this. And it brings you back into center. And when you do it, all of a sudden, all those things that you said, you say, I forgive you for saying this. I forgive myself for saying this. I forgive everybody for doing the things of happening. And once we learn the law of forgiveness, 
which is the hardest law to learn, then we can go forward. Ashkin said in her meditation this morning, you know, go to your higher self. Go within and find the peace within. Every morning I wake up, I say I'm a peaceful soul. Thank you, God, for another day on this planet. And when we learn to say those things constantly, they just fall into place. And we don't have to remember, we don't remember, it's just programmed into our subconscious level of our brain. And we can go forth every day in a happy manner. We can go forth in a loving person because we're all love. If we look at ourselves and say, I love myself, you know, I pat myself every day, I love these things. Love or wake up, wake up, this dumb body, wake up. <laughs> One of the two. Just to get me back on the spiritual path. So don't allow yourself. You all know what to do. You know? Thank God for having good people. Thank God for having another few ministers in our organizations and that to uh, come in and somebody says your house is full of negativity or I was bombarded. I said okay call Philip. Philip comes, does the whole ritual, clean the house out and everything felt good again. So all of these things, how many of you sage every day? or once a week, your house. You sage, you get rid of all the negativity. We bring in this negativity and we don't know where it comes from. Do we? And we could bring it with somebody that's been very negative. It seeps into our energy fields. And what happens? Something happens to us. If we keep pure thought, pure mind, and everything around us is love and purification, good. Uh, I called Philip yesterday and says, I don't know whether I'm going to make it Sunday. I didn't call Steve because I already knew my teacher said, you're going to make it. You're going to overcome it. And I says, for two days I felt like crap. It felt like a cold. And uh, it's gone. Work with above, work with prayer. And the more prayer work you do, how many know that the Lord's Prayer opens up all your energy centers? Good. When you say the Lord's Prayer, you open up, all your energy centers are working in a harmonious rate of vibration you become a clear channel. So this is what happens. So keep and say every day, I am a peaceful soul, I am at peace, and everything flows. And now, thank you very much. Next time I'll do this lecture. God bless you and thank you. And again, you can come up and do the